how to create and deploy a form. So there are two ways of creating a form. You can do either online um, on Kobo Toolbox directly, or if you don't have internet, you can also do it offline on Excel. Uh, doing it online, it's very easy. It's very user-friendly. Um, if, you, if you just start using Kubo Toolbox, that's the way to go. Um, you do it directly from your account with a blue new button. It's, uh, and I'll show you more details, but it's, it's very easy and straightforward. Excel, um, it's, it's a bit more difficult, but you have lots of amazing options. And if you want to, you will uh, start understanding how Excel forms work, you will see that you will prefer to use Excel because um, it's, you can go faster at moving, um, at moving questions, changing question time. Um, you can have like complex uh, coding on the forms. You have one more step to load the form on Excel. Um, but I think all the people I know who've been using Kobo for a while, uh, at the end, they all use Excel to edit their forms. Um, so we will, I'll show you both, both ways. The first is how to create a form online. So on, directly on your platform, Kobo Toolbox. Um, and uh, the tool to create the form is also, also known as the Kobo Form Builder. So you start by clicking on the new blue button. Once you click there, you will have this window appearing and um, you can select build from scratch. And there you can enter the title of your survey, your project. Uh, you can have a description of your projects and you can have the sector, the country. You don't have to fill all this. I mean, the mandatory one is just the title, but if you want more information, you can fill all this. And then you click on create project. And here we are online on your Kobo form builder. The first thing to think about when you create a form are the metadata. So the metadata are data that are going to be automatically recorded every time your form is filled. And it's very useful because you know how in each form we always ask about the date of today, for example. Um, and with this metadata, you don't have to ask the surveyor to fill it. You just click on start time, end time, today, when you build the form, and automatically every form will record the time of the beginning of the survey, the time of the end of the survey, and the date of today. And I also recommend um, selecting this device ID uh, metadata, which means that it will tell you for each form what was the ID uh, it was uh, the form were used on. And it can be useful to find who, uh, who filled that form. So once you have your uh, metadata selected, you can start uh, adding questions. So you have this plus button on the left. You can click on it to add a question. And then you can write down your question in there. You click on add a question. And you see you have a panel with all the different uh, question types. So for example, my first question is survey your name. Um, I want it to be, you know, I want to be able to select one option uh, in list of options. So I, it's a select one question. So I choose select one. Once you have your question name and the type of question, there you can work on you know, adding the options, changing the settings. So here, for example, if I have a country question, I can add 
my different countries, Canada, Madagascar, Mozambique, Tanzania. I can add more, I can delete them. And um, you can use this little uh, tool to change the settings and we'll see that in more details just after. And you can add uh, questions, you can delete them, you can duplicate, you can move questions. Uh, and you can add questions to the library. So all these tools here. So the first in gray is the settings. Then you have the red one, uh, which is like a trash bin, which is to delete the question. This blue one is to duplicate a question. And then this last one is to add the question to the library. So you can easily find it uh, later. So we'll see the options and um, we're just going to do an overview. We won't see everything in details, um, but you can play around with Kobo later and find out what you can do. So here I am in the settings of the questions. And what I see here, the first field is the data column name. This field is very important. This is what will be recorded in your database, the header of your, of your column. And by, you know, we, we want to have some conventions on how to create this because as we scale up the use of Kobo, we also scale up um, the use of online databases with automatic storage analysis and visualization. And it's important that those data column name respect some um, convention so that it can be easy to create nice graphs for you and automatic queries. So this data column name, um, we always want it to be in English. So no matter what you know, language you use um, to, to speak during the survey, the data column name always has to be in English, uh, it has to be short, uh, lower case with no special character and quite intuitive so we know you know what the question is about and so when you create a question Kobo will automatically uh, take the uh, take the name of that question delete the spaces and re replace them with the underscores as you see here and so there is just a bit of work for you to, uh, to change this data column name uh, to, you know, take out, I mean, make it intuitive, uh, make it lowercase, make it short, um, things like that. The second field is the guidance hint. This is optional. Uh, this is if you want to, the question can, is sometimes not very clear. If you want to provide help uh, to the surveyor to know what he's supposed to ask, you can, add a, you can add a hint. Then here you can select uh, if you want your, the response to be mandatory or not. And if you think about it, usually we want this to be yes, because what happens if you put no is that, um, you know, people will, uh, you know, they, they go faster, they won't see the question, they'll forgot to, to fill it, uh, or they just don't want to fill because it's taking time. So, and maybe they will just, they'll just forget about it. So it's good to put, if you want your question, you know, if you want to be able to analyze your answers um, without tons of blanks, then it's good to put your questions mandatory. Then you have some uh, ability, um, you have the ability to add a condition to make a question appear. This is what we call the skip logic. So the skip logic, for example, here I have the first question, which is, are you surveying a landing site or a market? And the next question is about selecting the name of the landing site. But if the person selected market here, I don't want this to appear. I want this landing site question only to appear if the answer to this previous question was landing site. 
And so this, we do it with the Skype logic. So under the Skype logic, we click on add a condition, the green button. And then you will see that you can select the question in the list. So all the previous questions will appear. You select the one that you want to use. So here it's, are you surveying a landing site or a market? And then you have, um, you have some codes here. You can use either is equal to, is different from, uh, is between X and Y. So here I want to use this question is equal to, and then it will show you the different list of options between landing site and markets. And I want to use landing site. So this means that this question will appear only if the answer to this question is equal to landing site. And you can have multiple conditions. You can delete that condition if you're not happy with it anymore. And you can change it, of course. Next option is the validation criteria. Um, so this is what is helping you to have less data cleaning to do uh, by making sure that the data that are uh, entered are correct. So for example, here I want to know about the crew size on the boat. And I know that the crew size is probably not going to be minus 12 and it's probably not going to be uh, a million, for example. So we can add some criteria to make sure that this, the answer is going to be logic. So here under validation criteria, I can click on add condition. And here I have different options that I can select. For example, this question's response has to be, and here I can choose again between, you know, equal to, different from, uh, superior, inferior. So here I chose this question's response has to be uh, superior than zero, and it also has to be less than a thousand. And I want the question to match all the criteria, not just one of them. Again, you can add the condition, delete, and edit your condition. All right, when you have all the questions that you're happy with, um, you can use the buttons to check the um, check all the, the question by displaying, you know, expanding all the, the answers or not. So here, for example, this is a select one question with different options, but you don't see them right now. And if I click on either this button, it will show all the options for all the questions. And if I click just on that one, it will show me the answers just for that question. And if I click again here, it will collapse, uh, you know, shorten uh, all the questions and not show the answers. And you can also move your questions around. Um, so for that, it's quite easy. You put your mouse above a question and you'll have this uh, arrow that will appear. And so you click, you hold the click and you can move the question, put it, for example, here, um, let go, and then the question will be moved. And uh, once you're happy with all this, you can preview your form by using the little eye button here. That will show you how it looks like. All right, when uh, you've saved the form, you can, so once you saved it, it's still under the drafts. And to make it available for you to download and, and then collect the data offline, it has to be deployed. So you click on this blue button deploy. Uh, and from there you can test, you can edit, you can change the settings and see the data. 
Do you have any questions? <laughs>